much is that this is reversible. So now we're going to move on to kind of a second concept. We're going to put two concepts together to build a robot here. So this is concept number one. Now we're going to take our same elastomer, our peanut butter and jelly, and we're going to try to make a three-dimensional object out of a two-dimensional shape. Now this is really cool. So here we have our peanut butter and jelly, our elastomer, and it's not stretched. And then we have a flexible but not stretchy frame, maybe like a piece of paper or a sheet of plastic. You cut out a shape. So here we have a rectangle. So then we take our elastomer and we stretch it out. So it builds a lot of tension, like a rubber band, stretching a rubber band. And we glue it, adhere it to the frame. And then the frame, when they're both glued together, bends upwards. So now we have a three-dimensional shape from a two-dimensional frame. And it's kind of like how if you were to take a rubber band and put it around a piece of paper, once you let go, the piece of paper will roll up because the rubber band doesn't want to stay stretched out. This is also a little bit like a bow and arrow. How many people have done archery? Yeah, so, uh, so when you're actually shooting a bow and arrow and you pull on the string, the wooden part of the bow, it can't shrink or expand or anything, so it can only bend to accommodate all that tension you're putting on the spring. This is the same exact concept. So now you can see how we can make really cool, complex, three-dimensional shapes out of just two-dimensional cutouts. So if you have something other than a rectangle, that was a very simple example, but here we have you know, more complex shapes, and you can see that they fold up into really, really interesting three-dimensional objects. So now we can take this concept, our three-dimensional objects, and we can add it with the dielectric elastomer that we've already talked about, and we get a robot. Exciting. So here you can see uh, this is our three-dimensional object that we just talked about. And the only addition here is that there's some black stuff on each side of our peanut butter and jelly. Those are the electrodes, and they're actually uh, it's painted on carbon grease for anyone that's interested. And then when we apply a voltage, it flattens the whole things out. It squeezes the peanut butter and jelly sandwich so that it flattens out, and we can go back and forth between two-dimensional and three-dimensional. So let's make this a little more exciting. We can patch all these things together into a serpentine-like robot. So here we have just a bunch of those little pieces that we just looked at. And by applying a voltage to certain ones at a time, we can make different parts of the robot move when we want them to. So we get this kind of spastic, serpentine-looking thing, which is pretty cool. So what else is stretchy? We've looked at a We've looked at an Ecoflex robot, a silicon rubber robot. We've looked at a dielectric elastomer robot. But let's think about a robot that's made from something stretchy that's a little more common in our everyday lives. Maybe a toy. Can anyone think of kind of a stretchy toy that they've played with? Slinky. Oh, slinky is the obvious one. I should have thought of that. We have a baby toy even though we don't play with them. Okay. <laughs> Who here has played with Chinese finger traps? Chinese finger traps are really fun. So we made a robot out of Chinese finger traps. And instead of telling you how the robot works and then showing you the robot, this time I'm going to show you the robot and then tell you how it works. So here we have our Chinese finger trap robot moving around, squirming around, all sorts of crazy ways. But who notices something a little bit different about this Chinese finger trap? <laughs> Does anyone see? It might be hard to see. There's wires wrapped all around this. Does anyone see this? Or maybe now you see it. Yeah, you can see these wires kind of zigzagging all around the robot. And that's what's actually making it move. So let's talk about these wires. So we call this our meshworm robot. And the wire that you just saw is something called shape memory alloy. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It's an alloy or a metal that remembers its shape. And it only remembers its shape when you apply heat. So when you heat it up, it goes back to whatever shape you taught it. So imagine that you're looking at a really, really tiny piece of this wire, such a tiny piece that you can actually see the molecules. So originally, what we call the way the molecules are spaced together, we call that the crystal structure of the SMA wire. So originally, we have our crystal structure or our molecules positioned in these nice cubic squares. Uh, and then imagine we're taking this wire and we're just going to pull on it. We'll just stretch it as far as we can. So all the molecules are stretched very far away from each other. And it, you know, it makes the whole thing longer. And the, the crystal structure changes. But then when we apply heat, so we just apply a voltage, heat. Uh, 
it shrinks back up and it goes to its original shape. So here you can see by, by, by pulling on it or loading it and then heating it, we can make it go from short to long to short, which is exactly what was making the robot move in the previous video. Now, the other thing I want to point out about this wire, you can see this wire here, is if you zoom in on it, it's actually a really, really tiny spring. It's not just a wire. And the reason that we do that is because, again, if you can imagine that you have just a plain wire, not a spring, and it you know, expands by a little bit, that's fine. But if you were to have a spring that takes up that same length, it can expand by a lot more by just including more of the wire in a smaller space. Was that clear? Yes? Okay. Great. So here's a video of an SMA spring, like you just saw, and it's hanging by some weights, so it's already been loaded. And then that research just was put a little thing that was giving it voltage, so it heat up, so it shrank all the way up, and then it was loaded again, so now it comes back down. So that's how much deflection we can get out of our spring. And then here again, you can see it on uh, the Chinese finger trap. So by applying heat, it shrinks it down and makes the thing shorter and fatter. And then when you take off the heat, it goes back out and makes it longer again. So let's look a little bit at how we can actually use these springs to make our robot do specific movements. So here you can see a sequence of images. In this top one, uh, nothing is being heated up. So the robot is just sitting there and nothing's happening to it. In the rest of these images, the red lines represent which wires are heated up at that time. So you can see in this image, the wires that are all along the length of the robot are being heated up. So again, like in the video you just saw, the entire thing is being compressed downwards because all the wires are pulling it down. And in these images, just one side of the robot is being heated up. And that way, that one side compresses, but the other side doesn't, so it bends. And from the rest of these images, you can kind of see that we can get the robot to do different cool things by heating up just specific wires on the robot. So just to make sure that our squishy robot is actually squishy and indestructible, we're going to show one last video where our squishy robot has four different segments, so it's locomoting along. And our researcher here is going to start hammering on it. <laughs> we just have to make sure that it won't break. <laughs> So let's move on to another robot that's maybe not so squishy. We might have an instance where we want to maintain stiffness of a robot but still have it change shape. For example, uh, I have another piece of this squishy material, uh, very squishy stuff. But if I wanted to actually put something on top of this, I wouldn't be able to because it can't hold it. It, it can't even hold itself. So we want to look into something like that, that might be stiff but also change shape. Um, so what can we think of? Maybe a piece of paper. How can we make a piece of paper change shape? Exactly. So we can use origami techniques to make a piece of paper fold up into very interesting shapes, like Kermit the Frog. And then we could unfold the paper and fold it again into some random mythical creature here. Um, so what we have is a self-folding origami-inspired robot. Shape one, a boat. Uh, so this is a polymer sheet. It's a kind of a plastic type sheet. Uh, and it folds up into a shape and it uses the same type of technology as the springs, the wire springs, the shape memory alloy, except in this particular device, we have sheets of shape memory alloy that are embedded in the polymer sheet. Uh, so here you can see it folded up into a boat. And now that same exact sheet was unfolded and will now fold up into a different shape, a plane. These round things that you see are magnets. It helps the, it helps the uh, sheet snap into the shape that we want it to fold into. Um, and these lines that you see are just crease marks where it's designed to fold. So this is our, uh, our first step toward transformers, I believe. 